our individual lives are invited by the Spirit to merge into this time of worship, in this time of faith, in this time of community. The Spirit in me greets the Spirit in you. Come, let us worship. Yo, which means hello in Heistjokla. Summer solstice is the day when the sun travels its longest path through the sky, which is why it's the longest day of the year. The summer solstice is a sacred time for Indigenous peoples, so it's no mistake that here on Turtle Island, we celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day at this time. Indigenous Peoples Day happens on June 21st, and it's a time for Canadians to consciously learn about Indigenous peoples and to learn about our cultures and our history. June is Indigenous Peoples Month in Canada. The marking of this month and the June 21st Solstice Day are because of the successful lobbying and advocacy of Indigenous peoples in Canada. This time is marked to recognize our people, our languages, our contributions and our cultures that have been here since time immemorial. National Indigenous Peoples Day is important for all Canadians to participate in, to understand that the history of Indigenous peoples stretches long before the arrival of European settlers. Our people's rich relationship to the land, languages, and our traditional ways of being extend beyond the formation of Canada. We also have a relationship to Canada and have made many contributions along the way, and that needs to be celebrated. National Indigenous Peoples Day is a time of celebration to recognize and lift up the resilience of Indigenous people and communities, and to celebrate what we have to share with the rest of the country. For the Indigenous Church, this is a special time of year where we get to highlight our cultural pride, our connectedness to our home territories, our resilience, and the ways that we are reclaiming our family and cultural connections that colonization attempted to break. We can all continue to take specific action to celebrate or recognize this day. Attend a local celebration or event, plan to attend with family, friends, or colleagues, Spend the day exploring the Indigenous heritage of the place where you work or live. Learn to introduce yourself in the Indigenous language or languages from where you live or work. Add to the Indigenous economy. Support Indigenous businesses by shopping or dining in Indigenous-owned stores and restaurants. Listen to Indigenous music. Visit an art gallery or a museum with a show curated by Indigenous peoples. Read a book, fiction, nonfiction, or poetry by an Indigenous author. Watch a movie or TV show featuring Indigenous direction, screenwriting, and acting. There are so many great new productions across all genres. Many of these things you can do year-round. Today we celebrate and commemorate Indigenous people and their contributions to this country, and we continue to engage in efforts to walk differently into the future together. To the Indigenous Church, and especially our elders, Wallace for the ways that you have fought sometimes against all hope, for recognition and respect in the United Church of Canada. All of the ways we are bridging faith and culture today are because of your tireless efforts for a daring justice grounded in deep spirituality. Happy National Indigenous Peoples Month this June, and please do something to participate in Indigenous Peoples Day this June 21st. The reading of scripture I would like for us to reflect upon today comes from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, verses 35 to 41. It is another story of how the words and actions of Jesus left a lasting impression on his followers. May they also leave a lasting impression on our hearts. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? 
And waking up, Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be silent, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the blessing of God be upon these words of Scripture and upon our hearts as we reflect upon them in faithful meditation. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but whenever I read that scripture from the Gospel of Mark about Jesus in the boat with the disciples and the storm rose up, I keep thinking about that familiar hymn that many of us know, Will Your Anchor Hold? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain? Will your anchor hold or have firm remain? It's a wonderful gospel story of Jesus and his disciples and how the the sea was a a tumultuous time for them and, and the disciples were panicking. But meanwhile, not too far from them within that boat was Jesus. And in some accounts of the tumultuous sea, uh, Jesus is sleeping at the stern and they come and we wake him up and, and Jesus talks to the disciples and says, why did you wake me up? Why are you scared? What are you afraid of? And then Jesus rebukes the wind and says, be still. Peace. And the seas obey. And the disciples, they sit there in awe in the presence of Jesus amidst the calm seas that he rebuked, that he inspired. And he asked the disciples, why are you panicking? Don't you have faith enough to get you through this storm? It's a wonderful story for us to hold on to, to think about, to think about the the various places we are in our lives, of how that that we go through things. We go through events in our lives that that cause us to be in a tumultuous state. I'm sure all of us can think about times when there was extreme chaos in our lives, when everything seemed to be just turned right upside down, and we wondered, how am I going to get through this? What What's tomorrow going to bring? Have you experienced tumultuous times or storms of life? (laughs) I'm sure all of us can readily think of a few examples. I know that, that I've gone through some storms of life, through uncertainties. And sometimes what I've found is that when I've gone through those tumultuous and stormy days in my life, that I keep forgetting, and it's easy to forget, that my faith is there to sustain and encourage me. Sometimes I'm so confounded with with grief or loss or confusion or uncertainty that I can't even remember my faith. It's in those occasions when I do that that I sometimes push God so far to the limit or my faith so far removed from where I'm at, that I forget. I forget that it is the faith that holds me and the faith that encourages me is the faith that will sustain me. The disciples were very much like that as they sat in the boat. They were in the midst of those those big waves and they wondered, how are they going to survive this? Jesus, save us. Jesus, help us. But one of the things that Jesus often did, as we know from our scripture stories, is that he gave the disciples and his followers the gifts they needed to sustain and encourage and grow their own faith. And he reminded them with that story. Do you not have faith enough? 
get through this? He was challenging them to remind them that, yes, they do. And sometimes we have to be challenged as well to remind us of the level of faith that we have. And we know that other familiar parable of, of faith, that even faith the size of a mustard seed, the smallest of grains, is enough to get us through even the most difficult of days. Faith really cannot be measured in, in size or magnitude. It's a very personal expression of our own. Someone we may look at and say, look at the faith. Look how much faith they have. Their faith may not be any larger than ours. It's what we do with our faith is what matters. And how we use it to get through, to get through our difficult times and to hold on to. Today, one of the observances that we are doing within our time of worship and within our faith communities is acknowledging the National Aboriginal Sunday. The 21st of June, the summer solstice, is National Aboriginal or Indigenous Peoples Day. It's that first day of summer when there's equal distance of daylight and darkness in the calendar and in the, in the calendar year and in the physical creation. We honor the people who were part of our country long before we ever came here as immigrants. And we honor them and remind the, ourselves of, of how much that their spirituality, their life, and their connection with creation and the creator has sustained and encouraged them. And, and they have gone through a tremendous amount of turmoil, of loss, of abandonment, of grief, of tragedy that has been inspired often by the hands of others and by the desire for others to exercise control and domination over, over a, a, a group of people who they thought were less than human, savages, barbaric. That is a storm of life. That is a storm of life that has been imposed upon others. In the past few years, we have worked on diligently on how to restore relationships, renew a connection with those whom we have imposed the stormy chaotic events of life on others. We are holding on to and living out our faith by acknowledging that, that God calls us. God calls us to, to offer peace, to offer reconciliation, to offer love, God's love through our faithful dedication into the lives of others, to help everyone restore, to restore themselves into a sense of equality, right relations, and to calm the storms of life that continue to exist in their minds, in their hearts, and in their lives. Storms that were not their making, but storms that were imposed upon them. As people of faith, we're reminded of the faith that we possess that helps us to get through our difficult times. But this gospel story reminds us about how that as the followers of Jesus, we are to be mindful of the faith that we possess that encourages us to look at the storms that are surging around us and in the lives of others and be that message of peace, to be that avenue through which God's love, God's grace, God's peace can help still the waters of life and give others the courage and strength that they need to get through 
whatever stormy situations and life experiences they are going through. As people of faith, we're called to be the still, calm voice of God, and the presence of God in the lives of others. If we find ourselves in a stormy sea, in a life experience that causes us to bounce around and be chaotic, let us remember this story, this story that reminds us that we do indeed have faith enough to get through the storms of life when we can acknowledge that God is with us, that our faith is strong enough, and to remind others that their faith too is strong enough. And if it isn't, then we offer them the gift of our faith, our companionship, and our love that is given to us by God to help them through. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold to their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor hold and have firm remain? We do have an anchor. And that anchor is our faith as the disciples of Jesus, our trust in God, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit. As we gather in worship, reflection, and prayer today, I will offer a version of the Prayer of the Four Directions in celebration of National Indigenous Peoples Day. As you listen to these words, feel free to turn and face the various directions as I offer the prayer. At the end of the prayer, I will offer an alternative version of the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to now join your heart and your spirit with mine in prayer. As we join our hearts in prayer, God, we are mindful of the circle of life of our everyday living, and within our communities of life and faith, we celebrate the moving circles of life that is open to the blessings and the presence of the Great Spirit. Great Spirit, creator of all, we come before you today to lift up all who long for new life and cling to hope. We pray for this moment in time and the blessing of this new day and for the hope we receive in the stories of resurrection that death is not the end, new life is the gift. We praise you, Great Spirit, for the blessing of creation and with every turning of the seasons and day, and from every direction, you gift us abundantly. We turn and face the East. Spirit of the East, bring us enlightenment as the sun that rises each new day. May we find acceptance in our reflection, understanding ourselves as you do, that we are precious, sacred, and full of potential. We turn and face the South. Spirit of the South, warm us with the love that brings our birthright. May we remember that love is not limited by the prejudices of others, but is vast and boundless, as open as the prairies. Let us feel it within our heart, a flame that cannot be extinguished. We turn and face the West. Spirit of the West, Bring us transformation with the setting sun. May we find within ourselves the courage to change what we can, 
the strength to endure what we cannot, and the wisdom to know the difference. We turn and face the North. Spirit of the North, bring us the tranquility of the winter snow. Let us find peace within ourselves, a gentle quietness that drowns the noise of the world and allows us to feel our own heartbeat, our own spirit, echoing the rhythm of life itself. We turn and face east again. With our heads bowed, we witness the blessings of the land upon which we walk. Mother Earth, cradle us in your nurturing embrace. Let us be grounded in our identity, standing tall like the white pine, rooted in the knowledge that we are worthy, that we are loved, that we are enough. We lift our heads and let our eyes gaze upon the heavens, the skies, to see the wonders of the Creator above. Father Sky, lift our spirits to soar with the eagle. Let us rise above the smallness of narrow minds, touching the infinite, knowing we are as vast and as varied as the starlit universe. We once again lower our gaze and fix it upon the horizon in the east and witness the blessings of this day. Creator, we ask you to guide us with new life and new light, encircling us to be avenues of your love to the world, to creation, and to one another. May we journey in beauty, in holiness, and in sacredness in this moment, experiencing balance and harmony and our unity with the whole of creation, your creation embodying the resilience of our ancestors and sparking the promise of a brighter, more inclusive future. In your sacred name, we pray. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your common wealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and trust, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Aho. The gifts that we offer today and every day come from the many ways in which God has blessed us abundantly. Time, talents, and our financial resources. It is from these gifts and blessings that we gather together our offerings for this day. Let us give thanks and praise and gratitude to God for the blessings that we have received.
as we offer our gifts today, I invite us to join our hearts together in prayer. Generous God, you have gifted each one of us in bountiful ways, and so we offer our gifts in gratitude and love. May all that we offer today and every day be used for your work in this place, in our community, and in the world. Amen. So we've gathered within this protective shelter of God's presence in this sanctuary to separate us from the real world, the outside world. But those sounds, the sounds of world passing by in our midst, cars, children's laughter, people doing yard work, are reminders to us that outside of this place is the place where God is calling us to go. So let us go forward from this time of worship and prayer and praise and carry our faith out into the world, out into God's world, to make a difference in the lives of others, to bring hope, to share love. Let us go forward with peace, with love, and with faith. Amen. <laughs>